So here's the Emax Hawk Apex 5 inch 4S edition. And this is a pretty important product, I think, for Emacs. It's got HD0 in it, of course, and Express LRS. Uh, so making a big jump forward, I think, into the future of uh, some of the world's most interesting, <laughs> some of FPV's most interesting open source products. So, of course, we've got Express LRS open source, and we have HD0 now going open source. So who's this quad for? I think this is for people that want to fly out in a park and not disturb as many people. It's uh, it's really light and quiet actually, um, and that's because it's so uh, light weight. I weighed it and it's like 180 grams uh, as a five inch. My lightest five inch racer is uh, let's see 280 grams. So this thing is nuts. Um, it's got really lightweight motors on it too, and it flies good. The other cool thing is that the batteries are uh, at 850 4S, which is really, really inexpensive. So I'm buying uh, Tattoo batteries for uh, 20 bucks. Normally I'm paying uh, like 40 bucks for the same type of battery. Uh, so those are the things I like about it. Um, also, it has the Nano V1 camera, which I think is the best uh, camera that you can get uh, for HG0 and 16x9. Maybe, uh, maybe behind the Digicide V3. So it's not the Nano V2, but uh, this, this thing's pretty awesome. Um, I remember going around this tree last year around this time when the beta cameras were coming out um, with the new sensors and this reminds me just of that moment. And you know, like, who is HG0 for? HG0 is for people that want uh, something that feels like analog or is more like price point analog. Um, You know, but it's digital, it's a huge step up from analog. And it's it's from a company that does open source. Um, fun fact, I'm actually running an open source PTX build on this uh, drone right now. This is a PTX build that I made myself. Um, I haven't made any customizations yet, but I intend to put in some customizations for like startup behavior so that it boots up uh, at zero power. And then I can also do uh, smart audio and stuff like that through uh, MSP VTX. But like that's not really what people that would buy this bind and fly are here for. They, they just want something that will work. But in terms of who HG0 is for, I mean it's for the tinkerer, it's for people that like open source. Um, it's really cool that uh, we have this option now, a digital VTX that you can compile your own source for. And as you can see, I'm having a really good time just floating around. Um, yeah, and I'm not a good freestyler, but it, it easily does a lot of these common moves. So let's see, we'll do a little punch out here. Bone to the moon. Yeah, super light. And I think in the future, very, very near future, we're going to see some uh, low cost goggles come out, kind of like the Scout HD that I'm wearing right now. And then you're talking about getting into digital for a lot more attractive price than some of the other systems out there. Not to mention, if you already have a analog goggle that has HDMI input, then you can go and get the, uh, the VRX that'll plug in, and then you know, 
have, you, you've got a pretty inexpensive upgrade path to, to digital. Uh, man, this thing is fun. I, I remember when I got into drone racing back in 2018. And uh, at that time, I asked the guys, what should I do uh, to build my first 5-inch racing drone? And uh, unquestionably, everyone said, go grab the Hawk 5. You can't build a better drone yourself for that price. So that's what I did. I went out and got that. Uh, and that got me into 5-inch uh, drone racing. And I got to thank Emacs for that to this day because that really started uh, a lifelong <laughs> hobby uh, that I'm really enjoying. So this is sort of like the successor to that for me. Uh, it's, it's a bind and fly, five inch um, racing drone, but also you can move this camera down and, and uh, run it as a really competent, uh, lightweight freestyle drone. And that, that's what I've been doing today. I'm out at a park. Um, it's a very lightweight drone, so it doesn't bother people. And the batteries are super inexpensive compared to the big five inch batteries that I fly and it's super quiet um, the camera is great I've always really liked the HD0 Nano V1 camera it's uh, the best widescreen camera I think you can get in the Nano form factor uh, you, you know even the new Nano camera the Nano V2 is more of a 4x3 camera where this is a, a 16x9 camera so on my goggles that are doing 16x9 I, I actually kind of prefer camera like this for more freestyle type flying. It's got this uh, lollipop antenna on it and uh, it's actually performing a little bit better than I thought it would. You know, I just kind of move it up like this and that gets uh, better you know, reception based on the angle I'm flying at. I haven't had a problem. Um, it's performing exactly like I've expected uh, this 200 milliwatt Whoop VTX to perform. That's got these eco motors on it. Uh, these are 2400 kV. I'm not sure about the uh, the bell size and stuff like that, but it's a pretty lightweight uh, motor with a, I think it's called a T mount mount on there. Uh, not my favorite mount. It takes a while to swap props, and I can't just do like a press fit like I like to do on my tiny trainer. Uh, so I actually have to put those screws in there. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's a ton of fun. What can I say? There, there is definitely something to this uh, type of form factor, like an ultralight 5-inch uh, with like a dual stack. you got an AIO in here. I believe it's an F7. Uh, and on top you have the, the Whoop VTX. That makes a great little combo. Um, the stack isn't very high which is going to be good for durability anytime we go to like a three high stack uh, it really increases the risk of uh, kind of crushing the stack with everything being so close to each other but as you can see there's a ton of clearance uh, between the top plate and the VTX and a ton of clearance underneath the VTX to the AIO so great job Emacs on uh, the clearance here uh, I see they even have a little uh, protective plastic piece between the AIO and the carbon on the, the bottom of the frame so that's a that's a smart move um, I mean it flies good really good it's lightweight it's uh, HD0 Express LRS my two favorite um, new open source technologies in, uh, in um, drone FPV Uh, well, to see what the price is going to be, I think that's going to be the one of the most important factors in this. Like, does this make sense to to buy a pre-built drone um, or or to go and build your own? And uh, yeah, I think I think Emacs is going after the crowd that is, you know, I I, I don't want to build. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust somebody to do a really good build and a really good tune for me. 
and I think they've nailed it for that. I, I think this would be a really good drone for somebody that's maybe gotten away from the hobby for a bit um, and wants to get it into HT0 and doesn't know where to start. Uh, this is a great example of what you can do with HD0. It's an ultralight digital uh, 5 inch. So, good job, Emax. So, yeah, it's fun for freestyle. Um, it's also, you know, decently competitive in casual racing. So I took this to the global qualifier, and while I didn't get, you know, too close to my, my best time, I was very, very consistent with this drone. Um, and I, I felt like a higher pitch prop would have helped, or maybe going to the 6S version of this would help a lot if I wanted to do strictly racing with it, but um, I'm really liking the simplicity of the XT34S batteries that are in this. It's like I've been able to just charge those with a USB-C charger, uh, which is super nice and easy and convenient. Um, so I'm really liking this lightweight, simple concept. Just slap like a Runcam Thumb Pro on this thing, and you know, bring some some batteries that are easy to charge off of a USB-C power pack, um, and and you just have like a fun casual lunchtime ripper uh, that you can then go and bring to the track, you know, on the, on the weekend and you know, have have some fun that way. So. This is, this is like a really good option for getting into 5 inch and getting into HD0. I could see like a guy that maybe does a lot of whoops um, and hasn't really gotten into the 5 inchers really liking this type of drone, like an ultralight 5 inch. Um, it's less intimidating, the batteries cost less. Uh, it's easier to charge it and feel with USB. Uh, it's a lighter weight, so when you crash into things, it's you know a lot less likely to cause major, major damage. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like here. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to go and, and buy a fleet of these to replace my 5-inch switchbacks, but this is like really fun and I would I would recommend this to to friends that are like oh man this this uh, FPV thing that you're doing is really cool what what should I get you know I'm gonna be like okay get the Emacs Hawk Apex 5 inch or maybe like the 3 inch one um, look for some low cost HD0 goggles wink wink those are a thing that will be coming. And go and rip, you know? And like, when you decide that you want to get into this further, go buy the HD Zero goggles and then use those, uh, those low-cost goggles as a ride-along set. Because the other cool thing about HD Zero is it's just like analog in that anybody can tune into it that's got an HD Zero receiver. There's no audience mode or anything to worry about. Everyone gets the same type of view in the goggles. Uh, man, just really like the, the feeling you get, just like you can do anything with this, it's nice and smooth, I can rely on it. Um, the battery life is insane. Let's see, it's really, really thin, but I can get under the car here. Yep, there we go, just barely. So. I like this thing. I like it. Very easy to fly. Uh, low effort to set up. <laughs> Way better video than analog, my goodness. Um, freaking awesome.